Hi everyone, it's Dragana from Sasebo. Welcome and welcome back to my channel. This is a new episode of Creative Mojo Card and I'll be working on the challenge that I set for myself in the last episode, which is about recycling, my favorite subject. Recycling turns things into other things, which is like magic. Create something new using only recycled materials. So what do I have here today? I have this old book of maps from Europe, old road maps. Okay, I use them occasionally in my journals, but it's kind of really busy and I think I can make them look a little bit more suitable for my journals. Now here I have some coffee from yesterday, so it has to be used. <laughs> I've got some rust here, which is made from old nails, recycled material, all right. And guess what? I've got some household paint, just some white household paint. Okay. Then, over here, I've got some leftover bubble inks. So inks that I used for my bubble papers. If you haven't seen the video, I will leave the link down below. And I kept those inks just to see how long they can last. As you can see here, they still got bubbles if I shake them. So I'm going to be using those. So we are going to create some nice papers that we can use to make different things. Before we start, I just want to show you what inspired me to do this. These are the maps that I've done, I think, last year, sometime last year. But on these ones, I used my jelly plate, okay? And I created some really cool, interesting backgrounds just with acrylic paints and my gel plate. I want to show you as well what I end up making with these papers, like envelopes that go in the journal. Then I made some of these little ephemera folders. I decorated them further, of course. I made some pockets that I can glue inside of the journals. And another envelope. Since this project is about using only recycled materials, I won't be using my gel plate and I won't be using acrylic paints. I will be using what I've shown you earlier. We'll end up with slightly different colors perhaps and designs, but that's all right. First things first, I have to get some pages out. Maybe I'll just use this one. They're all like this folded here, which is all right, I suppose. So I'll just grab a few. My idea is to just paint on one side, for example, on this side, the busiest side. And the rest can stay as it is or can paint it later on. And first thing, I want to give it a little bit of like a cover. And since I'm not going to use gesso or white acrylic paint, I'm going to be using just household white paint. You know, the paint that's meant for walls. Put the gloves on before you start with the painting. Okay, this is just white acrylic paint that's meant for walls. And I had a little bit of it left after I painted my old studio. Sometimes I keep it just, you know, if you end up uh, damaging the wall a little bit, you can fix it up. But I thought, why not? I'll just try and paint these papers. It should work. And it's quite thick, so I'm hoping it will give me a nice coverage. And I don't really want to cover this totally you know like so it's white i want some of the maps to show so it's perfect if it's not really all that white we'll see we'll try this one with the brush and maybe we can try one with the sponge and maybe one with the brayer and we'll see what gives us the best result this is just going to kind of make it less busy <gasps> like i like those maps but um it's just way too busy for me <laughs> i like it in small quantities so we've done that one with a brush let's do one with a braille i still have to add the paint with the brush This way we end up with a little bit of texture as well. Okay, I'm going 
going to try another one with the sponge. Quite a lot. I have two more here. And let's do one more with the braille. we've done the first step which is to add the paint i'm going to let these dry and then we'll continue here are the papers these are all touch dry these seem a little bit kind of soft but we'll just continue and i think i want to try one with just rust i have this it's a mesh it's also a recycled piece i use it as a stencil it's mainly used in construction work okay so i'm going to just like go over this with a brush i just want some sort of pattern there's that other video in which i used white acrylic with rust and i explain how although it looks like i've just applied water it's going to get darker as it dries so that's probably enough and i'm going to use some of these bubble inks i've got the green and the blue so i'm just going to lightly spray In a few areas. I'm still working on my ocean journal, so these are going to be perfect for that. Okay, so that would be it for that one, and I'll put it aside. On this one, I'm just going to use coffee, just add a bit of coffee. Now with coffee you can see the results straight away. Okay. I'll just move it a little bit. Good. I have another piece of that same mesh. I can't use the same one because if you were to add rust to coffee it will get really dark or gray as you can see here the coffee and rust when they mix they end up gray so i'm going to use a clean one i'm hoping i didn't use rust on this before i think i just use acrylic paints and i'm going to do the same with the inks just a little bit side to dry. I have this one and I found this which is a bubble wrap used before it is recycled. So here I think maybe should I just use rust? Just spray a little bit. Green, also recycled bubble ink. All the ones that I haven't used are this one. Ooh. Now these are all quite strong colors, so I'm just going to add a little bit of water. Just plain water in a spray bottle. And I'm going to move them a little bit. I 
And then I'm going to put this. I'm going to press it. Make sure the raised parts are down. Okay. Do the coffee again. sponge on this when we applied white paint so there's a little bit of texture going on as well I'm going to use this this is also a recycled piece of one of those plastic tablecloths and sometimes I use this when I dye papers I'm going to place it on top and now I'm going to spray with inks I'm just going to use green and blue again You see, although these inks have a dishwashing liquid, they're still all right. It's been has it been a month since I've done that video? I think so. And yet they're still all right. And I've got plenty more. I'm gonna keep using them for as long as they're okay and for as long as I have them. Just more coffee. All right. So that's going to be that one. And I've got one more left. I'm just going to use coffee here and ink without any stencils. Just plain. gonna leave that one like that i will leave those to dry and then we'll make something fun this is the following day let's have a look what we made this was the last one i've done i think with just coffee and spray inks without any stencils and i really like how it looks okay it also changed the color a little bit on the back now this one wow it looks very nice but I think this white paint surprisingly covered everything really well. While it was still wet, I can see the map underneath, but now that it's dry, it's like totally opaque. But I really like it. It looks really good. And the rust went through onto the other side, and that side looks interesting as well. All right, so that's that one. Let's have a look here. This one's stuck. Cool. I really like this one. Really subtle effect. And again, not many traces of map on this side. And here it looks just as if I coffee dyed it. Overall, I really like it. Yeah, very nice. Okay, this one. Now here we can see the map coming through, especially where the roads are marked with red color. I really like this one. Okay, really good. That's the other side. Now here, this one is a bit more dramatic. Oh, very nice, very, very nice. I really like this one too. We have the rust and the inks and <laughs> even some bubbles. That's from the inks. I don't know if you can see the bubbles. <laughs> so nice. I like this one too. And that's the other side. Of course, we can make many different things with these, but I actually just want to make envelopes today. The way I've been making the envelopes before is by just using this template card. And the size is five and one eight 
by seven and three quarters. So I basically have a line through the middle here and here. I've done this so that it's easier for me to align with the papers. Now for this to work, my papers need to be really square and I don't think they are. I'll just check. Okay. Yeah, they're just a little bit off. So I might just straighten these, cut off this end, like so. I might as well cut off um, these. I'll just measure like this. All right, I'll just put a mark through here and just continue. So now that it's nice and square, I can use it to actually mark where I need to cut on all of these. And I will do that, make them all nice and square, and then I will be back. They're all nice and square now. So this is how I've been doing this. Take the first one, I turn it onto this side. Then I place this approximately in the middle like this. And I take my ruler, okay, and I can see that it's 36 centimeters. So now I press here and I align this with my ruler. And I make sure that this line starts at 18 centimeters, which is half. So now I hold the card and I remove the ruler and I start folding. paint really made these papers more firm and flexible at the same time so it's really good okay and here I didn't do proper fold okay so now you have to decide what is going to be your top that one or this one and because I have that fold from before I think I want this down and I want this up so that is going to be that. Now, I join those two, that one and that one, and then I just fold this like that. But I don't fold it that way. I fold it onto the inside. Okay. Okay, I'm going to glue that down in a second. Now, I have all these corners that I need to cut. I'll just mark with pencil so that you can see. Now I need to cut these. You can try and cut them at the same time. Just fold like this so that you can cut two at the same time. And I go here just a little bit rounded from that side and I turn it around and I go there. I get nice rounded. Okay. Of 
course you can do this with an envelope punch if you have one I have one but I still do it <laughs> like this I don't know old habits die hard I think okay that's that now we need to glue that that I'm going to erase this mark pencil mark here that. That. all right now before we glue these if you want to ink your papers now it's the good time to do it because it's much easier I have some of these inks that I got recently and I haven't really used them. I think I'm gonna try with the green one. Why not? We always do everything just with brown or black. Why not have some green ones? Okay. I'm gonna ink here as well. Now here we need to round this and you can either put something round and draw a line or if you have a corner rounder just use that one I'm going to use this one I just know this won't work on that unless I put something like a piece of cardstock underneath this one so it's less slippery And I'm going to use this as well. I can see that here this is just a little bit off, so I can just go in and fix it. I also have these two that I need to ink. I don't have to worry about that, but this is visible. So if I want everything to look nice and kind of matching. Yeah. So that's now here again, I can see that this needs to be trimmed a little bit because when I close this part it actually folds over it okay so like that and now we can glue so i put the glue over here along the edge and over there along the edge okay and the same on this side there. There it is our envelope how good is that from an old map and it fits even the, the large card i love it and now all i need to do is decorate it so let's make a few more i forgot to give you dimensions of the papers sorry about that i'll do that right now so my papers are 10 by 10 Okay, I'm going to do the same with all of these. 
because I want to have five and then we'll decorate them. All right, here are our envelopes, all folded, inked and glued. And I think they're just gorgeous. And if I was to pick my favorite, I don't know, kind of like them all, but yeah, I think I like those two the best. Anyway, now you can use them as they are, as you would use an envelope, or you can use them in your junk journals to store ephemera if you're sending a happy mail or something, and then you can further decorate, say, this side or that side, it's up to you. You can stamp pictures, you can draw pictures, you can glue things down, you can just leave that as the writing space. If you're going to use them, for example, like this, imagine this is this page in your journal, and then you want to bind this inside of your journal, for example, you can take two, glue them down together, like this, and then bind that inside of the journal and have a pocket here and a pocket there and maybe a tuck spot there. In that case, when you decorate, you need to decide if it's going to be on that side or on that side and then decorate vertically. If you don't really care, if you're going to use them as an envelope and just tuck them inside of the pocket to put them inside of the journal, then you decorate them this way. Or you can do it in a way that it doesn't really matter how you turn it. For example, just show you something. I have these little clusters of leftovers from when I was doing that recycling video. And maybe I'll take this one. So, for example, here, if I, if I put this here as a decoration, I think it looks nice. If I use it like this, I can tuck things in if I just glue it here and here. But it's also usable if, if I keep it this way. It's a belly band that works either way. Okay. The same as this. If I put it just like that, no matter how you turn it, it's still a belly band tuck spot. So let's see if I have any that would look nice. Yeah, I think that one would look, or even this one, because it has those circles, that one as well. You can have just like little decorations, for example. Or I have these faux stamps that I made a while ago. I could even do that. Glue the stamps. Something like this. I have some of these frames from recycled packaging. I could have, for example, that. And then stamp some images inside and leave that as the writing spot yeah the possibilities are endless i also have some of the paper ruffles got some fabric clusters i think these would look nice as well for example just just like that without any images that would look nice on them as well and yeah paper flowers look at that and paper flowers you can even put them on this side where the closure is nice oh but this one maybe this one would look good here That one looks good. And I've got some of these that I've drawn with pen and ink. I actually like them. Okay. Oh, I think these look really nice on these envelopes. These large flowers. What do you think? I've got some of these. Yeah, so just play around with things that you have. 
these look interesting as well. Um, what else do I have? Oh yeah, I've got some of these. Uh, watercolors. Watercolor little drawings that I cut. So I can have that, for example. There. And a little just top and bottom. And have it as a belly band. It would look good on that one as well. This one. This one might look nice here. Something like that. Oh yeah, so many things you can do. There's another one. This one. Look at that as well. Looks good next to that. Yeah, so experiment with little images or things that you might have. Here's a little drawing, drawing of a flower. <laughs> like it and the leaves yeah. if you're doing like a nature theme journal like the earth leaves a little like a label here perhaps and a little stamp there to have little stamps like real stamps there's one <laughs> looks cool what else can we put there I have some paper butterflies that a large one that one looks nice it can also go on this side as a closure I mean yeah the possibilities are endless even that one and you can put it there and then draw the trajectory of its flight around here like that and that look cool yeah, so I'm just giving you examples here. <laughs> I'm not doing anything. I'm just showing you what can be done. What else? Oh, yeah. No, the, the ocean theme. Got this image stamped. You can make an extra pocket there. Or in this case, I think I have one. Like that. You can glue it like that and then use that as a tuck spot to close it. Better example. This fish. It's a bit too big actually. You can glue like the whole picture on one side and have it as a pocket. I'm giving you all these examples and I haven't committed to any of them. It's just really bad of me. It's because I can't decide what I want. So I think I kind of like to put these flowers here. And I would probably, I won't glue them. I will either use a bread or an eyelet. Maybe eyelet would look good. I don't know, I just, I just kind of like the look. It looks so nice and rich. That one, on these lighter color ones. That one, as well. Turn it that way. And, yeah. I'll just check if I have any of the black eyelets. I found three. Just check for 
first. Here. Where's my pencil? I think it's all right. Love it. Let's do the rest of them. Okay, so that is that. And I think that would look really nice in a journal page. So imagine this is in a journal. Just join it here. I do it sewing or glue. So you have a pocket here. You have a page here to write on if you want to decorate further, and then. You have that. I think it looks really pretty. So we do those like that. Okay, so what do we do with these ones? Something like that. And have something else here. Of like this, maybe glue it down like that. So, if you look at it this way, so it's in the journal, it will still look nice. We can even just cut off that bit there. I think that's what I want to do with this one. I'm going to put the glue. Going to just fold this like so. I won't cut it, I'll just fold it. I'm very happy with this one. I think it's going to look really pretty inside of the journal. Placed on that side, and here we can have it like that. Okay. Now, is this one left? Nice, it's definitely a possibility. I like this one as well. It's a nice one, too. have it as a tuck spot then we wouldn't actually use it over the page i kind of like this flower but i think we had too many flowers and i want to do something different here and i have these charms and i think they would look good there i just have to figure out which one perhaps the bee the one with the bee might look good. I think I need to put an eyelet here as well. And I'm going to put it like really close by. And because this is flimsy, I will need to reinforce it. Let's cut a circle. Mark a hole here. Oh, actually, better do it together. Gonna add blue here first. Nice. 
What is that? B. I think it's really pretty and we can hang more things apart from that one. Isn't it great? We have these cute envelopes and we only used old roadmaps. Some household paint, some rust, coffee and a few inks that were left over from the previous project. Okay, I think it's time we draw the card for the next prompt. Okay, let's shuffle. Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. What is going to be the next card we've done? A few already. And okay. The next card is going to be this one. Clutter is nothing more than postponed decisions. Pause for a minute and think about your current art or craft situation. Is there anything that is slowing you down and hindering your progress at the moment? An old project, an idea, a feeling perhaps, a piece of furniture, a tool. Maybe it's time to let it go and declutter your mind as your space to allow fresh flow of inspiration to come. Yeah, I can think of a few things that I need to let go. <laughs> Well, this is going to be a really interesting one. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode and I hope I see you soon in the next episode and in some of the other videos that I have in store for you. Thank you so much for watching and I hope I see you soon. Bye for now.